everyone, it's Alex once again, and I am here to do a little bit of teaching here. Uh, so let me hide this. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to build an actual application from start to finish. It's going to take a few videos and a few lessons for us to um, go through. But what we're going to end up with is an application that, and, and this is going to be a Windows application, it will not be a core application that can be run on Linux systems. It's going to be run only on Windows systems. I apologize for that. But for some odd reason, the core application stuff was not working for me when I was trying to build this. Um, and so what's going to happen is we are going to build a Windows form application that will collect a grocery list. Uh, I've jotted a few things down here what we're going to do. Uh, this application will be a grocery list that does the following steps. It will um, produce it'll produce a table that keeps track of items, the quantity, if the item's taxed, and the price. Um, it won't calculate tax on an item because there's you know 50 states plus you know US territories and every state is different. Um, it will have the ability to add, remove, and update items in the list and delete. And we'll say delete. Well, that's remove. Uh, it will have the ability to save the list for future usage in a common delimited file. So we want to be able to save our work in this list and then reload it when we need to. Um, we're going to give the individual the ability to share the list by sending an HTML CSS email as well. And so Lastly, and the thing that I didn't jot down here, is this app will be deployable. And what do I mean by that? I mean that this is an application that is going to be able to be installed and pushed out. So at the end of it, what we're going to have is an application that we can install on our PC. And I'll just go to it here. Uh, what did I do with it here? Go into my C users, blah, 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 documents. And here is my application here. So here's my zip file. I should be able to make a copy of this. I'll just throw it on the desktop here and paste it in there. And what I will do is I will right click this and I will say extract all. And I should be able to click setup.exe. And a window should pop up here. Did I double click it? I don't think I double click it. There we go. And I can install this. Install and it should run, and I should be able to add items to it. So, um, let's say grapes, and then let's say are there a dollar for a quantity of grapes, and I should be able to also save this list right there. I should be able to load an older list. So, if I click there and I see older lists that I have here the new list, the old list will pop up here. It'll automatically tally the number of items that we have, number of taxable items that we have, a subtotal of items there. I should be able to click share and email this. So I'll email this, email this to myself. No, let's send that to another one. Let's see, it says email successfully sent. And if I open up my email here, uh, my Outlook, I want to get my uh, oil changed today. And let's see, nope, not there, there. Date, date, and scroll up to the top. 
there's my grocery list right there. If I open this up, here's my grocery list here. So I should be able, and you see that it comes from a specific email address, it comes from my email, and that's what we're trying to get accomplished here. And then obviously, since it's installed, I should be able to see it on my taskbar over here. If I can close this and reopen it, let's test it one more time and see if I've got a list. Yep, there we go. Um, I should be able to remove items from the list. So I should be able to say, delete grapes, delete figs. Let's say I don't want the toilet paper, I should say yes. It removes the toilet paper, it recalculates the totals, the number of items and everything else there. If I want to update a list here or an item, grapes right now are two dollars for one quantity of grapes we'll say that's a bunch of grapes let's say grapes went up in price are now three dollars and seventy five cents and let's say I want two and if I say update item it recalculates the price there for me and it recalculates the subtotal you notice that it changed colors too so we want all of that functionality um, we also want the functionality so that if a user is messing around with this, they can't resize buttons and move stuff around, you know, if they say share, um, they can't click stuff and add empty lists and stuff like that if they don't put stuff in there. See how it says you did not enter an item, there's no items. Uh oh, we've got an exception. And so what we'll also do is we'll try to fix any exceptions that we have. I threw a couple of exceptions in here just to be on the, just to, you know, to, to all purpose so that we can see how we can um, keep um, exceptions out of our, our code. <clears throat> Everything is done in C Sharp and I'm using Visual Studio. Um, this full project, um, once we're done with it, I will deploy everything to github um, as well so let me move stuff that I don't need there and so you'll notice that the little check marks are there to the left and all that kind of stuff so um, what we'll do is we'll get started on this and some of the concepts we'll learn we'll learn some about forms and some properties of forms we'll learn about constructors and interfaces we'll do some looping um, before uh, for loops and for each loops. Uh, we'll learn what disposing of an object is in C sharp. Um, data tables and data views. We'll talk a little bit about classes and event handling. And we'll use um, modals and dialogues. And so what a modal is basically is when you have an application that you say load. Nope, not that. Well, let's just load that list. I'll show you what that means. When I say share, this is another form application right here. This is a modal right here. So that's what a modal is. So we're going to learn a little bit about how to do that. And we'll just kind of go through the code. And what we'll do is we'll use this code as our guideline and kind of go from there. So that's what we're going to learn. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next video.